what I want to look at here is, you know, what, what is it doing? What is the scatter plot showing you? What it's doing is looking for this association between two variables. So just a bit like last week, we talked about how one variable changes with another. We're doing the same with a correlation. How does this variable change with another variable? For example, how does population size relate to GDP, gross domestic product? Do countries with bigger populations have higher GDPs? We might expect that, other things being equal, but of course that's not quite exactly the case. Some countries are very rich and have much higher GDPs per person than others. But the bigger the population, of course, in general, you might expect the, the, the gross domestic product of the country to be bigger. Crime and unemployment rates. We all know an idea that, that as unemployment rates rise, so does crime, you know, the frequency of crime. Actually, that hasn't happened in recent years, interesting. In this country, unemployment has gone up, but the crime rate's been going down. So it's not always the case. But we want to investigate that, that relationship. How does the rate of crime relate to unemployment in a country? And of course, the most obvious one is, is height and weight. Someone's height is related to their weight, or their weight is related to their height. The taller people are, the bigger they are, and therefore the heavier they tend to be. But it's not an exact relationship. Obviously, some people are, are very tall and very thin, um, and they will weigh less than, than, than very tall people who aren't thin, and so on. So what we're doing here is looking at the way that one of these variables, how the values of it relate to the values of the other variable. To do this kind of, of, of investigation, the scatter plot, and to use the correlation, the, the statistic on it, both of the variables must be, as I said here, rank, interval, or ratio. And this is the same if you're using SPSS, scale or ordinal is, is the, way to, uh, the way SPSS talks about it. So the important thing is we can't use correlations on the things that we were using last week for the cross tabulations. So the categorical variables I've said here, things like ethnicity, gender, town of birth, occupation, and so on, you can't use in scatter plots and correlations. They have to be in order at least. So whatever it is we're talking about has to be in some kind of order and ideally some kind of scale. So things that aren't in any particular order, like town of birth, for example, um, it doesn't make any sense to correlate. Um, and of course, remember what I said last week, SPSS will do it for you. If you put in those variables, it'll generate a, a scatter plot and so on, a, a scatter plot rather, uh, but, but it won't make any sense. So you have to know what you're doing. You have to remember that those kind of categorical variables can't be used uh, in scatter plots and correlations. So it's gotta be rank, interval, or ratio. Okay, so here's an example of what a scatter plot looks like. And I suspect you're familiar with this. You've seen this kind of thing many times in, in, uh, in newspapers, on, on TV, and so on. Um, let me just go over what it, what it shows you. It, in this case, it's age in years versus number of, of GCSEs. Um, I wonder where that came from. It's the data set I've used many times before uh, from years ago. Um, and what it's showing is up the left-hand side, so this axis here, is showing the, the number of GCSEs. So the people with the most GCSEs, I think it was it 13 up here, uh, or maybe that's 14, uh, that's the 13 and so on. And the ones with, with none down here, so that person had no GCSEs. So that's the, the up and down axis, the, what's called the Y axis, and across the chart is age. So it's going from age 20 here, so the lowest age is there, and it goes across up to somebody over 50 over there. So the chart has a, a, a dot or a cross on it for each person in the data set. I think from memory there were 34 people in this data set. So there'd be 34 crosses or dots on, on, the, on the, the chart. And each of them is indicating for that person their age and the number of GCSEs they got. In this case, there's not a very strong relationship um, you might say there's a beginning of a trend of saying that, that the younger people got more and the older people, so the older people over this side got fewer GCSEs, but it's not very strong relationship. It, it, it's not a very clear picture at all. Fortunately, they're not all like that. <clears throat> Okay, so let, let me go through some of those interpretations of, of the scatter plot. This one's a much nicer one. It's a made up one. Um, so variable Y, the, the up and down, and variable X across the base. Um, as in this case, you've got um, a series of points going from bottom left 
to top right. Um, not exactly on the line. The red line is the, the best fit, what's called the regression line. Um, a bit of statistics give you the, the best fit line, that's it. Um, not every point is on that line. So we haven't got a perfect relationship between the two variables. So we know that some people are around about the same on variable Y, but they have different values for, for variable X. So for example, these two people here are the same on variable Y, but they obviously have different values on variable X. Um, the other way around, you could say, here's a couple of people, um, those, that one there, that one there are the same on variable X, but they have clearly different values <coughs> on, on variable Y. They are different, but they're not very different. So there is some relationship going on here. As variable X tends to increase, so does the value of variable Y. And the word that's used for that is, is it tends to correlate with. So there's a correlation between variable X and variable Y. Not, a very, not an enormously strong one, but, a, but, but, but not a weak one either. Is It's a middling one, as we'll see in just a, a minute. Okay, now the important point about correlation, going back to this diagram, what we're saying is that one variable tends to be related to the other variable. So I go back to my previous one, the, the age in years tends to be related to the number of GCSEs, but not very strongly here. When we say that, we are not claiming causation. An important point to remember about correlations, when you find a correlation, if it's a weak one or a strong one, it doesn't matter, but any kind of correlation, we're not saying it's causation. We can't infer from discovering a correlation, however strong it is, to causation, to saying one thing causes the other. So we might find that the older a child is, the better she is at re reading. We know that. And we might know from other things that age does make a difference here. We have various kind of psychological theories that tell us that as you get older, you'll get better at certain kinds of things. Um, so there is a correlation, and we know there's a causal connection, but we can't infer that from the correlation. And likewise, we might find that the less your income, the greater the risk of schizophrenia. <coughs> I, I suppose there's possibility of a, correlate, of, of a causal connection here. You might say, if you get schizophrenia, you're less able to earn a salary, and therefore your income is likely to be lower. So that might explain it. But from the correlation, you can't infer. There has to be some other information somewhere that tells us that. So just look at this one, height and weight we know that there's a very strong correlation between height and weight. We can see that, obviously. But we know that weight does not cause height. Whatever weight you are doesn't cause you to be a certain height. That doesn't happen. But maybe height is, is, is somehow con contributing to your weight. Well, yes, it probably is. The taller you are, your bigger your bones, etc., cetera, the, the heavier you'll be. But there are other things as well, other causes of whatever weight you are. Um, and it might be body shape, um, your diet, your fitness level, all sorts of things contribute to it. So the fact there's a correlation doesn't mean there's a causal connection, or even that there's a single causal connection. There might be several causes for that correlation. Now, that's an important thing to bear in mind for some of the interpretation of a correlation. So you find a correlation, you think there's a relationship between one variable and the other, but it doesn't necessarily explain it all. There may be other things that are acting as well. So bear that in mind. And sometimes you find a correlation and there really isn't any relationship at all, at least not a simple causal relationship between the two variables. So you have good, strong correlations, um, but no cause. So here's the last example, which, which looks at that. Ice creams and the number of ice creams sold correlates with the, the, um, the rate of drowning. Now, there's no obvious direct linkage there. It's not that you know, having an ice cream um, means that when you go swimming afterwards, you suddenly drown or something like that, or even vice versa, that, that um, you know, I don't suppose how the, the, the drowning could be anyway related to buying ice creams, but because uh, if you're drowning, that's it, you're dead, you won't want ice creams. Um, but the point is actually that that correlation is what's called a spurious correlation. It's not the one thing causes the other. What's going on here is something else that's causing both of those things to, to rise together. And we know that it's, it's, it's warm weather, basically. As the weather gets warmer, more people go swimming, and therefore more people drown. There's always a small proportion of people who, who, who have accidents. And of course, as the weather gets warmer, the sales of ice creams increases. 
So this is what are called a, a spurious correlation. You need to watch out for this. You'll find these kind of correlations, but they don't necessarily explain anything. There's something else going on which is actually causing both of them to, to rise together or, or to, to, uh, to drop together. Okay, so that, that's the general lesson about correlations. It looks for relationships, but we can't simply infer a causal relationship from the correlations. Of course, with other information, we can build up a model and that might explain it, but, but from the correlation alone, we can't. Okay, so let's look um, how to do a scatter plot, how to produce one of these charts that looks at the relationship between these two variables. I think I'm going to try the first one. It's eight minutes long. Mm -hmm.